Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about why I decided to drop a $13,000 annual contract. This video is mainly going to be me talking, so in just a second, we are going to start watching me work. This is the very last service I did, so I would have some, some video to look at here. That's one thing. Secondly, if this is something that you would rather listen to, I'm going to try something new and put an MP3 version of this video in a link below, it's probably just gonna be a Google Drive folder where you can download. If that's helpful for you, please let me know in the comments, otherwise I won't know to ever do that again. Third thing, if you've got any kind of comments about, oh boy, Brad, you're so lazy, you're a dummy for doing that, you can leave those, but just realize that, <laughs> trying to figure out how to put this diplomatically, if you are an employee somewhere, you may not be looking at it from the owner mentality. So first of all, I would ask you to watch the entire video. If you can't be bothered to do that, there will be chapters in the description that will help you skip around. So maybe you see your specific question addressed. I am not trying to tell you why you should do something similar in your business. I'm explaining all the reasons, all my personal values that led me to make this decision. I'm not looking for you to say, that's the way to go, Brad, or you're a dummy, Brad. Another thing on top of that is that if all you say is you're lazy, I can't engage you in any kind of a rational debate. You know, I can't say, well, that's a great point. I thought of that. Here's why I still decide to do that. So if you want to say, I would never drop that contract because it's so difficult to replace that type of work, then I can say, well, that's not a concern for me, but I can understand why it would be for you. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for uh, if you want to disagree. Feel free to disagree however you want. I'm just saying, if all you say is a sarcastic comment, that's probably all you're going to get from me in return. <laughs> now, we have to set the scene, and to do that, we have to go back to the spring of 2019. I was approached by a board member of this HOA and said, hey, we would like a quote for maintaining the common areas in our HOA, Homeowners Association. The guy that we have now uh, is missing some things. We're not entirely thrilled. We'd like to get a quote to see if we could, you know, get new service. So... Of course, I obliged, uh, met with one of the gentlemen from the board. We drove around the property for probably an hour and a half, two hours talking about, okay, here's all the things, da 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 I spent probably two and a half or three hours putting together a proposal. You know, it, it, it was a good looking proposal. You'll probably see it here on the screen. And my bid was somewhere around 12, seven, 12, it was high 12, whatever it was. They reviewed the proposal, the board did, and the gentleman came back and said, hey, we would love to go with you, um, but right now we're paying a little bit closer to nine. Is there any way you could match that? So as diplomatically as I could, I said, well, you know, I, I appreciate that, that you like me that much, that you, you would like me to have the contract. I would love to have it too. Um, unfortunately, I'm in a situation where the price is what the price is. Another thing to consider is that if you aren't happy with the service that you have now, and if the service you have now is missing things, um, it, it doesn't really make sense that you'd pay the same amount for better service. And he said, okay, uh, we'll keep you in mind if anything changes, thanks so much. I believe I was approached March, April, and then in June, July, they reached back out and said, okay, we're ready to go ahead with you uh, with the, the higher bid amount. And I said, excellent. So then they gave their uh, current guy 30 days notice, and I believe I started August or September of 2019. The contract expired September or August of 2020, just recently. I learned, there were three folks who were serving on the board, and I learned each of their personalities over that year, how to answer their questions, how to handle them. There was another individual who sometimes, I won't say we butted heads, but so for instance, I remember sometime in August of, uh, it must have been August 2020, I sent some kind of video. If I still have it from the chat, I'll go ahead and put it up here. But it was basically me saying, hey guys, I know I'm supposed to service the property today, uh, but it's been several days since the rain. Your property holds a ton of water. If I put the mower on this, I'm going to ruin it. Uh, if I have it, I'll play it now. It's Florida, spring and summer, where it's raining all the time. So the same thing happens several times during the year. 
And I remember one time where um, the individual was like, hey, are you coming today? And I said, no, unfortunately, I know it just rained the other day. It's going to be too wet to mow. And he said something along the lines of, oh, that's a shame. It's a really beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to work, something like that. Now, I can't read tone. It might have been harmless, but I took it as he was, he was trying to show his displeasure at the fact that I wasn't mowing. So I stopped what I was doing. I drove straight over to the property and I basically did uh, the same exact thing as I had done in August and said, I understand you. Again, if I've got the video clip, I'll, I'll insert it. Hey, Mr. So I know you were concerned about the fact that it is a, a nice day, but that I'm not going to be mowing. So just like I said, from that back in August 7th, um, it's not just is it not raining it's what are the grounds conditions so for instance if you take a look at this spot and, and just for reference this is the same exact spot that i was in last time we've got i don't know if you can hear that but if you can see that well you probably can't on camera but what i look for is when i'm walking a 200 pound man am i are my footprints leaving tracks and if they are I'm not going to put a thousand pound mower on it because that is absolutely going to leave tracks and it's going to damage and rut the lawn. So I understand that it can be frustrating, but for me, what I do is I look at the property's uh, worst common denominator. And if that means I can't mow, then that's what it is. For the ponds, when there's this much water, for me, that becomes a safety thing. I, I don't want to be on a wet pond bank. And, and again, this was on the August 7th chat too. So. You know, it's nothing new. It's it's the same. It's always been for weather-related delays. Um, but I'm going to go take a look at a couple other spots that are normally bad and see if I can see anything there for you, too. And so now we're over in the pavilion area. And again, this is an area, too, that just that just holds a ton of water. And if, again, it's, it's going to be much harder to see in camera than in real life. But, I mean, you can hear how wet that is. So again, I, I get the frustration of it's bright outside, why aren't you mowing? But the fact is it just, I, it has to be the right weather conditions and the right ground conditions. And unfortunately, there's a lot of parts in your property where, uh, you know, in these common areas where even if it is sunny, if it's holding water, which it does all the time, I just can't, you know, I've got to wait a few days for it to dry out. So hopefully that explains things a little bit more. If you've ever got questions, feel free to call me. Um, you know, like I said, sometimes tone can be hard to come across in chat or text. So. You know, I don't know if you're getting upset or I don't want you to ever think I'm getting upset or anything like that. So sometimes, uh, you know, just meeting face to face if you need. I can always run up here, anything like that to answer your questions. Anyways, hope that helped. Hope you have a good day. So all that being said, you know, I learned how to navigate the, the folks on the board. When uh, my contract rolled around for renewal, that board, the entire board was shifting out and a new one was shifting in. I submitted in my renewal contract a 3% increase. That triggered the need to reshop everything and that coupled with the fact that in a month that board was gonna be gone, they said, we're just gonna go month to month, the new board will handle it. That's fine, makes sense. This is the number one biggest reason why I decided to drop that contract. That gentleman from the first board who initially sought me out, the reason he wanted to pay more money for better quality is because he experienced lesser quality that comes from a cheaper uh, bid or a cheaper product, if we can say that. With him now gone, this new board, they may have never gone through the things he's done. They may have never gone a cheap route and said, oh man, this we can't go the cheap route. This new board comes in, they might want to shake things up. One of the main ways to do that is to save money on the lawn care guy, which is, you know, the HOA's biggest expense. The, the main reason I got picked was because this guy pushed, no, we need better quality over price. We've seen what poor quality and low price does. It's not okay. That force, that influence is now gone. You've got a new board. Here is the second bigger issue. When you bid a commercial account, you bid the entire year that scope of work, and then you chop that yearly amount into 12 equal payments. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, at least where I am, seven months out of the year, I am busting my butt in just a little bit over half of the year, I'm doing 80% of the work. Now what that means is 
I am not hitting my hourly uh, revenue goals during those seven months. Four days out of the month, I'm at that property. I'm slaving in the 80, 90, 100 degree uh, weather. There's nine tenths of a mile of edging. There's tons of string trimming. There's trimming around ponds. There's mowing on heavy slopes around ponds. There's getting stuck. There's, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. On the flip side, during the four or five months of steady winter here, that I am way exceeding my hourly revenue goals, right? Because I'm only that there's only a one once a month visit in the contract because nothing's growing. I go there, I pick up trash. If there's any sticks, I pick them up. Maybe it needs to be mowed here and there because you know there's some weeds popping up. Change out all the trash bags, and that's it. During those months, I'm there for like two hours a month. That is great money. So during the spring and summer, I'm not making great money. During the winter, I'm making amazing money. It all balances out because I have an annual contract. The issue here is that if my contract ended in September, what I was afraid of is that then March, April, May, June, July, maybe the board would have just kept me on they wouldn't have you know, gotten the quote until after several months of that summer work. And if I didn't have that full winter to make up for it, over the course of the year, I, I would have lost money, right? I, I wouldn't have done what I needed to uh, because of that. I had a choice of either getting out while the getting was good, knowing that my number one fan was not there anymore, knowing most likely it's a new board, they're gonna wanna cut costs, knowing that September, uh, or excuse me, October, November, December, January, February, I made the best money I could because there was only monthly visits. Now we're heading into the spring and summer. Do I wanna stick around month to month and risk uh, messing up my revenue over the course of time that I'm working here? Because I don't have that annual contract. I decided this in February, I gave him 30 days of notice. I said, look, end of March, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to continue service anymore. I'm happy with that decision. A couple of Brad specific reasons that I did that. My family purchased a, a camper in November of 2020. Once a month, we've, we took it out, we take it out for a weekend as a family, and we'll do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we really enjoy that. What I realized was, oh man, you know, I'm never gonna be able to do this during the spring and summer because Fridays are my busy commercial day. Take those two things I already talk about, add in this third thing that at least once a month, I would love to not have any Fridays full so that I can go camping with my family and we can spend that family time together. And that was another big incentive for me to, uh, to go ahead and unload this. Here is another, this is a very Brad specific thing. What I have found, and none of this is to brag or gloat or talk about what a good position I'm in. I have stumbled into a very good thing with this YouTube channel where I can go and do one job one job. I can make two videos off of that job. And those two videos in just a couple of months, if they, if I do everything right and YouTube likes them, I can make more on those two videos than I could have on this entire commercial contract. I got proof of that, right? That, that $30 mow that I did uh, last year for the same HOA, it was an abandoned house, bank owned property. Those videos together, I don't know what the exact number is. The last time I checked, it was over 11,000. And this one is the most Brad specific thing of all. But heading into this next year, would I rather give up all of my Fridays for this commercial contract that I don't know if I'm gonna get, that I don't know if the folks even want me anymore to make 13 grand, or am I going to get out on the tail end of all those winter months of work, free up, all of my Fridays where I can go out and at my leisure, I can pick jobs as I want. I can go up to somebody's house and say, hey, your pressure washing needs to be done. Your driveway looks filthy. I'd love to do it for free if you let me film it. So this is the situation that now I'm in because YouTube has taken off. It's provided a way for me to do less work and make more money. Anytime I've ever said anything about working less or doing something a more efficient way, I have people come out of the woodwork and say that, oh, I'm just lazy. I remember one time I showed some kind of a hedge trimming harness that took all the weight off of your shoulders and put it on your body. People were like, oh, you're so lazy for wanting to do that. Just do it like a man. I'm like, what? 
are you out of your mind? Why would I not want to work less, abuse my body less? I, I want to last as long as I can on this earth and lawn care will grind your body down to a nub. That is the long version of how I found myself in February saying, hey, I got to give you 30 days notice. This just doesn't make sense for me anymore. All that being said, a few of those reasons might be worth you considering for your business, either to say, I could see how that would work or no, that wouldn't work. The last couple ones, those are entirely specific to me that are based on my values, my principles. They've got nothing to do with you, so I don't expect you to, to line up with them. Now we're gonna get into the section. I'm gonna take a drink break, but now we're gonna get into the section where we're gonna cover what I think people are gonna say, oh, you should haves. So if somebody just writes me off and says, oh, you're so lazy, you just don't wanna work. Again, this goes back to uh, if I can do some crazy overgrown yard or some disgusting pressure washing project, if I can make two videos off of that and make over $10,000 in a couple of months from the ad revenue on those videos, I am going to take that deal every day of the week. And if you wouldn't, you've got a very different set of values than me. That's the only way I, I can think to say it. I honestly feel like a lot of those types of comments come from employees who they don't have that luxury, right? So if the boss says, hey, go string trim nine tenths of a mile, go edge around that pond for six hours, they can't say no. And to see me say, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to, they take it as lazy. The other big group is homeowners. So homeowners watch these videos and they say, oh, that guy, he." He's lazy. He doesn't want the business. I don't want to hire him. You know, that kind of thing, which I can kind of get, but it all boils down to having an employee mindset versus a, an employer or business owner mindset. The other component that comes into play that a lot of people don't think about is the YouTube thing. So I'm hoping that uh, by opening up a little bit with those numbers, you can kind of see how it makes more sense for me to focus my energies on this YouTube thing while I can rather than keep a commercial account Another thing I think people will say is, oh, you should hire employees. Um, that's not really the answer. So first of all, I, I've said it before, I'm mainly a stay-at-home dad. I mow lawns a few days a week. I would not have enough work to keep employees busy. It doesn't make sense for me to go get employees for one day a week work. That's one thing. Employees don't make sense. It, it, there's not enough work. Two, to legally hire someone, the costs that I would incur the headaches of payroll, of dealing with employees, of finding with someone, of you know managing them, no, it's not worth it for just this thing. Even if it was, I'll refer you back to everything I said. It still doesn't make sense for me, even with employees, to keep this contract. It doesn't. I have to interrupt myself because you're about to see me almost uh, stick my mower in the pond. I have done this every single calendar year, 2019, 2020, I stuck mowers in the pond. I was able to get them out. I almost do it here. That is a uh, rather lengthy rendition. I hope you stuck around for it. Uh, if you've got any questions, again, please read the description. If there's anything I think of later, I'll go ahead and cover it there. Thanks so much for sticking around with me. I appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more videos, hear some YouTube things you might like. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.